After Bertie's accident, men arrived to repair the roads. They started at the level crossing by the farm lane, tearing up the concrete and laying fresh asphalt. Speed restrictions were in place while the men were working. Mavis never went fast to begin with, but she found herself crawling up the lane with the heavy trucks lumbering behind. She was annoyed with this, but the men would wave and say hello as she passed, and that made her feel better. Now, of course, road work on Sodor meant one thing. George. Mavis had never met him before, and very quickly abandoned trying to be friendly. Ha! Huh, he sniffed as Mavis crawled up the lane. I know lorries who could haul twice your loads in half the time. If you're going to tease someone about their speed, Mavis said sweetly, it might help if you were faster than them. George growled as she rolled away. Early one morning, George was trundling through town to work. Cars and buses were honking impatiently behind him. Eventually, they began to speed around him and off into the distance. Keep it up, George, tooted Caroline cheekily. You might just get to work by tea time. At least I'm doing real work instead of joyriding with visitors, he growled. But Caroline just sped away, <laughs> laughing. They reached the level crossing and found the men waiting. Hurry it up, they barked, or we'll be here all night. The driver swung George around to get him into position, but he was being careless. George reversed into a toolbox. The driver hadn't noticed, but George had, and he said nothing. Quite soon, Mavis arrived with her trucks. Morning, she tooted flatly. George didn't reply. He just smirked. I wonder what's got into- Oh! Mavis cried. Her front wheels had hit something. She came off the rails and crunched the tarmac. Mavis wasn't hurt, but she shot a glare at George. Thanks for the warning, she snarled. Watch where you're going, George retorted. Now, if you were me, you would have swerved to avoid that. Mavis was furious. Everyone started arguing about whose fault it was when they were interrupted by honking horns. Cars had lined up either side of Mavis. Everyone went red with embarrassment and decided it best to clean up the mess. Well, this is a right pickle, isn't it? Mavis noticed Caroline waiting beside her. I'm sorry, Mavis sighed. No need for apologies, dear, Caroline said. I can hazard a guess who the real culprit is. I can't understand why he's so unfriendly, frowned Mavis. He's a terror to us all, sighed Caroline. Thinks I'm a disgrace to the road just because I'm an old car. It's best just to ignore him. The road work will soon be done, and he'll be off to rain on someone else's parade. Mavis conceded, but couldn't help but feel sorry for George. The accident delayed the road work, and the men worked well into dusk. It was pitch black by the time George and his driver began their slow crawl home. Let's hope tomorrow's a bit smoother, yawned the driver. A low wind blew through the empty streets. George smiled to himself. No cars were honking at him, and no steam engines were bothering him. He felt calm and at ease after a stressful day. Now this is what I like, he sighed happily. I'll get where I need to go, at my own pace, on my own time. If only it were always like this, hey? he said to his driver. There came no reply. Yes, George, quite right, George. The steamroller growled mockingly. Still, there was no reply. Just then, George noticed he was starting to drift across the road. What are you playing at? he yelled. It was then he heard a faint snoring sound. Wake up, you twit! shouted George. It was no good. The driver was fast asleep. 
George looked back to the road and cried in fright. He was headed straight for a building. Stop! Stop! He cried. George opened his eyes as the dust settled. He had crashed into the local pub and was surrounded by patrons. His driver, now wide awake, was getting quite the earful. George was most embarrassed. The next morning, George was pulled from the rubble and towed to Farquhar Station. He soon found himself on a flatbed coupled to Percy's goods train. Mavis, who had just brought a load of stone, noticed the steamroller's dejected look. Bad luck, George, she said sympathetically. Ha! Huh, he snorted. Driver's fault. Just plain stupidity, if you ask me. It could have happened to anyone, soothed Mavis. Why, we've had accidents caused by careless cleaners, cheeky little boys, even careless workmen and their tools. George blushed and looked at his roller. Um, uh, sorry about that. Foolish of me not to warn you. Mavis smiled. Oh, just a minor derailment, nothing more. I do hope you'll be repaired quickly, though. The roads won't fix themselves. Mavis wasn't sure, but she thought she saw George's mouth curl into a little smile. Just then, Percy arrived to collect the train. Well, 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 he chuckled. The king of the road takes to the rails. George's smile fell to a scowl. Take no notice, Mavis whispered. You're being taken to the repair yards by the king of accidents. George smirked. This'll be a fun ride, he chuckled darkly. Mavis smiled. She knew George would still be grumpy, as he is that sort of steamroller. But as the train set off, she couldn't help feeling she had made a new friend.